intrepid readers here I am with your weekly blog entry set to video this one is called the mystery of the illusion of control or is it now those of you who follow this blog know that I that's one of my flaws is I tend to think that I ought to be able to control things that are beyond people's control like I had shoved some superhero, superhuman um, ability to call the force and make these radical changes to my own existence, to my health, to my circumstance, you name it. I feel like I should and then I can't and then I get frustrated and then that's my flaw because I shouldn't have, I mean I should be worried about things I can't control. I guess is what should happen but recently I've been feeling a little bit differently about that because not that like I know I can't control huge things like who just got elected president of this country and other things that are flipping me out um, uh, and beyond my control but I just the more I think about it the more I kind of feel like well maybe the attitude that I should have control over these things is actually affording me some control and I'll give you three examples to show that right the first example is babies uh, you guys know I have two beautiful sons they're eight and ten years old and they were a long time coming and super hard to get all right, so just to recap, I was married for like one minute 20 years ago, and I tried to have a baby with this husband. Don't ask me why, because I was young, stupid, thought, I mean, the whole thing I did because I was young and stupid and thought that's what you do, and I, anyway, I don't know, but anyway, that didn't happen. So when I turned 30, I kind of worried that I maybe would never have a baby, um, or maybe never, excuse me, maybe never meet somebody that I wanted to have a baby with. So I went to try and do it by myself. I got a sperm donor, number 3445, still remember that, um, and uh, tried to do, to get pregnant with a sperm donor, and that didn't work either. Now, I had come to find out at the time I was trying to have a sperm donor that I had a personal issue uh, reproductively, which was my ovulation. The ovulation where the egg drops, the part of the cycle where the egg drops um, and can then be fertilized and burrow into the lining and grow a baby, that was happening super late in the, in the cycle, like day 21 or 22. Okay, and it's supposed to happen in the middle of the cycle, like day 14. And so when I was trying to have a baby by myself, we did all sorts of things to try and control that, like fertility drugs, Clomid, some drug that they used for birth control that I'm not sure what that was. But anyway, I tried all of these things. And no go. Spent a fortune on sperm donors. No baby. So then... I met the guy that I was supposed to have babies with. Thank goodness that worked out. But then we started trying pretty early in our relationship because I was already 30 something. <laughs> and um, not, nothing was happening there either. And it was the same problem, me ovulating too late. And so before we went to, we tried all those fertility drugs and we didn't go to I, IVF yet because I wanted to try some alternative stuff. So I went and tried acupuncture, which I'm now a wholehearted proponent of acupuncture for anything you can name, but particularly for fertility. And um, so I went to my acupuncturist, Sarah Beckner. She's fantastic. I love her and will always love her. She is the, she's a godmother to my boys. And did all the things that she told me to do and had acupuncture needles and drank this disgusting tea that she ground for me out of her herb garden, uh, acupuncture stream herb garden. And so I'm doing these temperature charts and as 
I'm five or six months into this treatment, the days start to go down. The ovulation days, you know, when you have a little bit more temperature and you're, you're, you're ovulating. So it was day 22 one month, and then the next month it was day 21, and then the next month it was day 20, and then day 19, and it went down, I'm not kidding you, one day per month, every month, until it hit day 15, and that's when I got pregnant with my first son. So there's that, there's that story. I will come back to conclude with that. Okay, the second story is about the writing because, of course, I'm a writer. I've always wanted to be a writer, and I now have, I'm having some success as a writer uh, with my first cozy mystery, debut cozy mystery, uh, hitting number one on the Amazon charts for cozy mystery and being an Amazon bestseller, and that is so exciting. I can't even believe it. So that's number two issue. Okay, 20 years of writing. I mean, I've been doing that for a long time, but I'm having, that's, that's moving in the direction I want it to move. All right, and then the third thing is, as I commented at the beginning, this election is very disappointing to me. I'm very disappointed at the administration that is taking shape right now and concerned, but hopeful. I'm being, I'm trying to be hopeful, all right, and, and have the understanding that Hopefully, whatever everyone who's running things now wants, hopefully they will come around to a place where they're honestly looking at who can help the most people in this country and not the, not the richest people and not the most powerful people, the most people who need help. That's my, that's my hope. So anyway, I was feeling very helpless and hopeless about that. And like I had already exercised all the control I have over that situation because I cast my vote in November and it didn't turn out the way I wanted it to. So then I read this, my friend Richard sent me an article. My friend Ken too sent me an article uh, that's kind of the, like an activist handbook in resisting the Trump agenda. And it related to what the Tea Party did over the last several elections to control that. And so in small ways, I am taking the guide from the, the handbook and using it to, oh, did I just disappear? Using it to um, exert what control I have over upcoming elections and, and upcoming and, and, the, and the, you know, laws that are being passed right now for the next four years. And that the only way you can do that is by calling your representative. So I've been doing that. I've been contacting our congressman, uh, Daryl Issa. If anyone watching this has Daryl Issa as their congressman, please contact me because we have a group. We have a group going on. Anyway, and I've been uh, making my voice known and exerting the, mo the most control that I can and just telling people that you can exert some control maybe more than you think even if you don't have any money or any, you know, anything but your voice. That's all that you need. All right, so those three things are how I feel, why I feel that I have control over things that I have no control over. And I'll tell you real quick why. As far as babies, if I would not have gotten pregnant, I would have tried the IVF if I could figure out how to pay for it. If I would not have been able to have babies of my own, I would have tried adopting babies. If I would have been unable to do that, I would have fostered babies or children in the with the you know intent of figuring out a way to adopt them eventually. My point is I wouldn't quit. So that's how I exert the control. Same with the writing. If I didn't have any success uh, down this path or for many years I didn't have any success down certain paths and so I adjusted my path went down a different path. If I wasn't having any success this way, I would go a different way. The point is, I'm not going to stop. With the election, with anything, with anything, I'm not going to stop. So I might say, okay, yeah, that's my biggest flaw, trying to exert control over things I, above, of which I have no control. 
but there's a really big or is it? I would love to hear your views. So until next time, let me know what you think about all this. And then until next time, stay mystified.